Hi there, this is Trent Goodmanson. Uh, this is my reference, and I'll show it up in the corner here. I'll show up in a second, there we go. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that my reference is vertical, and uh, it's just a beautiful crab apple tree in my yard. Um, and then I'm, I'm translating that to a square. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how the, the composition turns out. It can be a little bit difficult to, uh, once you've taken a photo and composed this picture, um, there has to be a little bit of create, creative planning go into it. And it doesn't always work, but uh, if I can capture something that that is, you know, in essence, cap well, captures its essence, um, which to me is not only about the color, and of course I'm starting with, with just pure reds, I've got a mixture of alizarin crimson and and cadmium red, um, and, and that'll remain uh, quite um, quite transparent, which which is brighter than if I were to to I will I will go over it later to finish it I'm sure, but uh, but I need to start out with this bright color because that's that's really the the ultimate essence of this of this piece that's what what attracted me to this scene. And of course, I'm not working from from life in this one. It's winter time right now, and these uh, buds aren't there. But I am trying to find the you know the, the the structure. It it kind of leans over to the left, and it's kind of this weeping type of feeling. And uh, just trying to get get a sense of shadow and light. Uh, I think that. These marks I'm making now might be a little bit too warm, but you know, because they're kind of in the photo, you can see it's they're a little bit more pink, but it does serve to establish light. I mean, you can tell immediately that that's supposed to be light. But I'll I'll get some more pure pinks over there, especially um, from the right where the light is is coming from, and it's more or less backlit, but. But if I can change that temperature over towards the the right, I think that'll work. Just getting a little bit more white still. It, it can be really easy to, to destroy or lose the structure at this point because, you know, I, I think it's natural for us to start looking into the details. And I, I like the, the general shape that I first put down. Um, and if I can preserve that, then I'm in good shape. Now, I've been thinking about this as I, as I do it, but um, why would I do this first rather than the background? I, wouldn't it be easier to do the sky and the, the edge of that shed uh, before I do these flowers, which, which are in front of it? Well, I don't know, yes and no. In a way, it's an experiment. Just, I don't know, I feel like every painting is an experiment in that way. I, I try not to be so in love with the idea that, that I can't make mistakes. And if I never try new things, then, then I never learn. But here I'm trying to, you know, I'll just go in and paint these colors you know, it, there's no, there's no reason why I have to, or why any of us have to, paint the background first and then paint on top of it. You know, it just it doesn't make sense that that, that that rule would be in place. Sure, it might be easier, in some cases, but uh, you know, it works. In general, I'm just again trying to establish that there is a hierarchy of, or that's not quite the right word, but there's there's a difference between the the lights and darks and and yeah i guess a hierarchy of how how dark things are you know just really establishing mood at this moment and indicating the the little roof in there i love that roof it needs to be replaced <laughs> with something more waterproof but but i really love the look of those old cedar shingles or shakes whatever they are So far, pretty pleased with these colors. Um, 
And of course, I've been painting for a long time. I'm able to guess pretty well um, and, and be right a lot of the time, but um, I'm, I'm more often um, surprised if I get it right the first time. And I, even if I think that I get it right the first time, I usually end up having to go back and change it a little bit. So I, I would say don't worry about getting it right the first time, really. Just, I thought about, you know, splitting the screen again and, and showing you my palette this whole time, but here's what I want you to realize is that it doesn't really matter. You can change it later. I'm just trying to get um, an estimation of, of the differences in values and temperatures. And, uh, you know, it just, it just, there's no reason to think that it has to be perfect the first time when you lay it down. If it's, if it's more or less right um, in comparison to what you already have on the canvas, then, then you're in good shape. You don't have to worry about the perfection factor, and you really shouldn't. That kind of, that'll bog you down, slow things down. You know, th these little shapes I'm putting in there are just to kind of remind myself what those are supposed to be. Uh, I don't know. It's getting away from me just a little bit. I don't want it to look cartoonish, which is what it's doing here. I'll probably finish up with the uh, palette knife. Just give it some kind of gritty texture. If something looks a little too cartoonish to me in any of my paintings, I'll, I'll usually go in with palette knife. Or just just start thinking texture, you know, texture and edge, edge quality. It'll make it a little bit more gritty, which to me looks a little bit more realistic. Because things in nature, especially, are not perfect. They're they're kind of gritty, and uh, dusty and dirty and you know rusty. And I like that. Um, let's see. So I always try to ask myself, what does it need the most? You know, before I move on and, and risk forgetting something, what do I need to put in there if I had to stop right now? So I can see that, actually, I didn't really see these when I first decided to paint this today. But the, um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter what it is. I think it's just the, the leaf um, buds that are starting to form under these flowers. And they're, they're still kind of warm. I, I, I want to kind of keep it in that same warm red color family, but they do need to be pretty dark too. So I'm, I'm mixing alizarin crimson and oh, a little bit of brown, my burnt sienna, and also my phthalo green. Burnt sienna, or I mean um, alizarin crimson and phthalo green do make a nice uh, kind of colorful black. People would call it a chromat or yeah, chromatic black, I guess. Um, you know, just again, just lightly indicating the structure of the tree underneath the structure that I've already created. And if I haven't destroyed, and I'm I'm speaking in terms, you know, generally, if I haven't destroyed the painting by this point, um, or destroyed that structure, that underlying structure, then it should be pretty easy to to put those those little indicators of indications of, of branches and, and things that, that connect naturally with, with the shape that's already there. So remember, once you've got your, your initial shape in there, don't, don't deviate from that too much and don't destroy that nice, big, powerful shape. And it doesn't need much to look like a tree and to show what, what it's doing. The direction that it's growing. I'm noticing that it is darker in there, um, partly because it's in shadow and partly because these branches are really thick under there. And so, you know, that, that structure kind of becomes um, a little bit less obvious what's happening. And for the first time, I'm actually wiping my brush. <laughs> All the other colors kind of, it's okay if they mix together. But now I'm gonna get into that sky and, uh, and background color of the ground. 
when that really changes things, doesn't it? If you cover that up with your finger real quick, you can see how... Well, I don't know. I kind of like it better before. <laughs> but it needs something there. So I'll change that color. That looks a little bit better. Um, or it's a little bit cooler. I think it just got a little too warm the first time. And, and right now it's just a flat block of, of color, more or less. So as I bring the sky in, uh, which, um, and now I'll have to actually really clean my brush, not just wipe it, but really clean it because I'm going, um, from a, uh, medium to dark color, you know, set. I'm, I'm, you know, all the colors I've used to this point don't have to be exactly pure, except for that first one. You know, I had a clean brush at that point when I laid in that, that nice pink. Um, uh, but at this point I need, do need to clean my brush off thoroughly. So I use my, my thinner, my paint thinner, and, uh, and mix up just a simple blue and white sky. And as I go in against these, these blossoms here, it, you know, I'll get some of that, that red on my brush a little bit, but I think it's okay. It, it'll still serve to, as long as I'm being careful not to over mix, you know, I'm, if you look closely, you can see I've got quite a bit of, it should be obvious how, how easily I'm laying it in that I've got quite a bit of that color on my brush. So when I paint with a relatively thick, juicy amount of paint over not quite as, as, as thick paint, it, it goes on pretty, pretty easily. And there's not a lot of intermixing. So now I can kind of uh, soften that edge back there so it looks like it's receding in the background. Kind of fill in those other spots just a little bit. And when you're looking through those holes, it does need to be a little bit darker. So I've just got grabbed a tiny bit more blue. And yet it's also getting lighter on that side. So I don't know. Maybe just a little bit of, just, I mean, like molecules of, of yellow and a little bit more white, just to indicate that the sky is getting a little bit warmer on that side and the sun is over there. You know, it's, it's a little bit subtle. I mean, the direction is subtle because they're, it's kind of backlit. There we go. It's looking better. I don't want, don't want the attention to go down there. I just want it to be kind of in the back of my mind that I know that it's, um, that it is outdoors and there's a green pasture in the background. Now that in the photo, you can see that there's a, a dead tree, you know, one that hasn't bloomed out yet behind there. And I don't know that I need to make it detailed, but you you see what I just did there, the sky. I was just, I don't know, used it as a cue. I kind of like that it adds a little bit of something there. And I don't think it's necessary to really know what it is. It just, I like the, the feeling of that soft, soft shape back there. Um, you can, you can see that, um, when you add the, the reflected light, um, in a, in a shadow, it really makes it come alive, which is why I've brought that, that warmth at the top of the side of the barn there, because it's reflecting from the, the brightly lit um, green grass below and you can't see what the source of what it, you know, what is, uh, causing that, that reflected light, but you can kind of guess because of the green grass that's in the background there. So just taking a, taking a gander at everything and seeing what it needs. Looks like these shingles need to be a little bit brighter, but it's still looking just a tad cartoony to me, <laughs> which I'll take care of shortly. Now, this is the hard part because I really like the color in the, the, the nice, bright, perfect reds. And that's exactly the color I want, and yet I do have to go over them and start to uh, I don't know, it's just, just fine tune 
these shapes just a little bit. And I'll try not to ruin it. <laughs> so just treat it lightly. Be careful not to go over everything. I'm gonna try to and hopefully succeed <laughs> at making the the structure more apparent and making it look a little bit more like like blossom bunches without destroying the the quickly painted uh quick feeling uh, or like plain air style feeling of it. I want it to still feel quick. Establish a little bit more of the the, the actual local shapes of, of these things. So that's my intention here. I just want to get the, the sweeping feel of the, some of these branches and as I mentioned already, just the little um, little bunches of of flowers, and then I also need to, of course, um, bring in some of the shadow parts. Uh, as the tree goes down, um, it, it it's more in shadow. There's still some little tiny light parts, but I need to generally make it darker down there. So I still want it to be colorful, but. And also get rid of those really dark, not get rid of them, but not make them, make, make them not quite so obvious and glaring. I don't want the eye to go directly to those things. Those were just meant to be underpaintings. Uh, something about the edge of that barn is bothering me. Uh, I don't know, now it looks worse. <laughs> it definitely looks worse now. So I'll put put a nice sharp line back in there. Gotta mix up the color again. Basically just, just purple and white and brown. Whatever, plus whatever else is on my brush. Just the concoction. If you don't know what to do, just, just try something. Sometimes as I'm mixing a color for, for one thing, I'll, I'll notice something else as I'm looking at the painting. I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me, let me just get out of the part first and see if I can get away with uh, not having to change this, this other thing too much. So the, the, the fewer things I change and like, I don't want to noodle it to death and just like nitpick it. And it starts to, the more brush strokes you put on anything, to try to perfect it and fine tune it, uh, usually it, the the worse it looks or the less powerful at least. When I use that word powerful, I think I'm really meaning like um, intentional. There are just a few in, indications of of leaves in here, just little leaf buds that are. Whereas those other ones were black, these ones are definitely green. But I don't want them to stand out too much. I just want it to be almost like a, uh, not subliminal, but like, well, kind of subliminal. I mean, to where you, you don't notice them, but your mind notices them, to where you it helps fill in the the idea that this is springtime, that there are some leaves coming out. I want to still pay attention to, to which parts should be in light versus shadow. It's definitely more in the light on the right side as this whole branch full of flowers is kind of uh, rounding, you know, on the top. And it, it, I want it to feel somewhat 3D. But I think it's a, it's about there. Some good, strong, thick strokes in there still. I think I can see the structure of the tree. Um, and here's my palette. <laughs> the after effects of, uh, of painting this painting of this palette. A little bit better view of it. Oh, 
Oops. And there's my computer screen with my reference that I was using the whole time. I'll go ahead and leave that reference up there. Well, yeah. So, um, decided that I'm going to do something further with that that barn. I still just wasn't quite happy with it as I was looking at it off camera for just a minute. I uh, just felt like it still felt a little bit too cartoony. And I don't even know if I... If I if that makes sense when I, when I say that, but I don't know. I guess I explained it well enough before. It just just kind of lacked texture. A little too soft everywhere, maybe. For whatever reason, I just felt like it needed something more. Palette knife is a great way to get nice, sharp lines as well as texture. You saw me on the side of the barn do this textural thing. And then up there on the cedar shingles, it's really easy to to get that, kind of carve it in. I mean, I'm, I'm more or less literally carving it in, aren't I? With the edge of that knife. And then of course I need to wipe it out so it doesn't look like, like that background is overlapping the foreground. Well, that's that, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has been enjoyable. I'll see you next time. Oh, and be sure to check out my work on trentgoodmanson.com if you want to see more. See ya.